There's a sutta where the Buddha talks about body contemplation, and it ends with the famous lines, whoever based on a body like this would exalt himself or disparage others, what is that if not blindness? And what's interesting about the sutta, among other things, is that the title of the sutta is Victory, i.e. victory over your lust. This is a common theme throughout the Buddha's teachings, that victory is not a matter of winning out over other people, it's winning out over unskillful voices in your mind, unskillful habits. And we tend to forget that in our modern world. For most of us, victory is winning out over people, other people. But who's winning? All too often it's our greed is winning, our anger is winning, our lust is winning. And we like to portray it to ourselves as a victory. But actually we've lost. In Thailand it's a long ingrained cultural tradition that when you give in to your anger, let your anger out, you've lost it, both in our sense of having lost control and also having lost the situation. And it would be good for us to develop that attitude around all of our other defilements as well. There are some passages where the Buddha describes monks who win out over lust and compares them to soldiers who are brave and victorious in battle. It's the ones who give in to lust are the cowards. Which goes against, of course, a lot of what our society teaches us about gaining the object of your lust and gaining the object of your desire and beating out other people as somehow a kind of a victory. And I'm sure there was that attitude in Indian culture as well. So the Buddha had to make a point very clear that when you win out over your lust, you, you're a brave soldier. And not just a weakling because you couldn't make it with somebody. The same goes with anger. We often think of getting into an argument with someone and the person who has the last word is the victor in the argument, but often the last word is something so stupid and something so outrageous that it's not really worth talking anymore. The Buddha says this again and again, and we see it all around us, that if people don't conduct an argument fairly, if they're not moral in the way they conduct the argument, they misrepresent themselves, they misrepresent what you say. It's really not worth continuing the discussion, even though they may have the last word and think that they won, they've actually lost. Of course, in the eyes of others, it may look like they won. And you have to train yourself if you're practicing the Dharma that you can't worry about how things look in the eyes of others. There's a sutta where Brahman comes to insult the Buddha, and the Buddha doesn't accept his insults. And he ends with a poem, and he says basically that people who think that you've lost because you don't respond with anger to someone who's treated you harshly or unfairly, they see that you've lost, that you're a coward, and they say that they know nothing of the Dharma. So you have to remember, you're not here to look good in the eyes of others. We're here to win out over our own defilements, and that's a victory that nobody else may know. But the fact is that you know, and that's what's important. So whether it's lust, desire, anger, don't think that by following through or gaining what the lust or anger desires is a victory. You've lost. The victory comes in control, starting with control and then moving into uprooting. But first start with the control, and that has a lot to do with your attitudes, because it's so easy to think, well, someone else will think this and someone else will say that, or I'll look bad in the eyes of others. The eyes of others reflect all kinds of things, and most often they reflect their opinions rather than reality. So when an argument comes up, ask yourself, is there anything to be gained in this argument? And there are times when the Buddha would get engaged in arguments, but he wouldn't argue out of anger. He would argue for the point of making things clear, either to the person who he's talking to or perhaps to people who are watching him. They might benefit from seeing how an argument that's connected with Dharma, in line with Dharma principles, actually works. So maybe it, clears up, maybe it would clear up their eyes a little bit. But there are other times when someone would come and the Buddha would just totally refuse to argue. There was a Brahmin who came to see him one time and said, what kind of teaching do you have? What kind of teaching do you teach? Hoping to get engaged in an argument with whatever the Buddha said. 
And the Buddha said essentially that the kind of teaching where one doesn't get engaged in useless arguments. And the Brahmin didn't know what to say. He had to leave. So let's keep in mind, the victory here that we're after is one over ourselves. Victory outside. I mean, there are times when you can win out to help people, poor people, people who have been oppressed one way or another. But don't look at it so much as a victory. Look at it as more as a form of generosity. You're giving your time. You're giving your energy. Whether it actually will succeed or not, sometimes you can make it succeed, sometimes you can't. You don't want to measure the success as to whether you beat out somebody else. It's more, did you conduct this properly? Did you do your best? If so, okay, that is a kind of victory. And again, it's a victory inside. So we're not saying that you don't go out and try to change the world where you can. Again, the practice of generosity is often best expressed in that way, in seeing that there are some injustices, there are some unfairness in the world. Maybe something can be done about that. And if it's some place where you feel inspired, and this is the operating principle with generosity, is it's, it's your sense of inspiration. You want to help, you have something to give, whether it's a material object or your time. You give that. As to whether the other person you want to help will actually be in a position to receive that help, that's something you've got to use your ingenuity to work toward, but you can't make the measure of your success how things work out outside. You have to focus on your intention and the fact that in implementing your intention you didn't harm yourself, you didn't harm any others. You didn't harm yourself by breaking any of the precepts, by stirring up greed, aversion, delusion. You didn't harm any others by trying to get them to break the precepts or intentionally trying to stir up greed, aversion, and delusion in them. There are other motivations for justice aside from anger. And you want to focus on those. But again, this is a matter of generosity. What extra time you have, what extra energy you have. As for the victory we're after here, this is a victory over our greed, aversion, and delusion. And John Munn's example is of a soldier in battle. And the soldier is the determination not to ever come back and be the laughing stock of the defilements ever again. Wisdom is your weapon. Concentration is your body of supplies. So this is the battle where, that we want to win. Greed comes up, you recognize it, you can work your way around it. Anger comes up, you recognize it for what it is. Any of the hindrances come up, any of the defilements come up. Your first line of defense is to recognize them for what they are, because all too often we can mistake them, and that's when we've lost the battle right there. Once you recognize them, at least you try to put up a fight. And John Mahabhu has a nice comment. He says, most of us don't even try to put up a fight. You can't even say that we've lost because we didn't even try to fight at all. We just sided with the other side and went with them. That's even worse than trying to fight and losing. That's another misunderstanding we often have. And you see that something is really strong in the mind. Say, well, if I even try to do a little battle with it, I'm going to lose anyhow, so I might as well give up. Well, that's again, that's the defilements. That's their fifth column inside your mind. So at the very least, try to fight these things. Recognize them as the enemy. And do your best to fight them off. And at some point, if you keep fighting, 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 you finally figure out some way to get past them. And that's the kind of victory that you can really be proud about. Whether other people know, you don't, they don't have to know. You know that you've won. And it's a victory that has no bad karma consequences. There's not going to be any animosity that's going to come from it. The victory out there in the world, one side wins and the other side that lost is determined to come back someday. We'll see what we can do the next time around. And it goes on and on and on, like that story of the, the two women. Apparently in a previous lifetime, one had been a major wife, another had been a minor wife of this king. The minor wife gave birth to a son. The major wife hadn't had a son, so she was afraid that the minor wife would gain power because of that, and so she killed the son. And then from lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, each side was going to kill off the other's children. So finally, one was after the, the child of the 
At this point, it was hard to tell who was who from the first story. But one woman was after the child of another woman. So the, the woman who wanted to protect her child came running into the Buddha. Both of them arrived there, and he taught them the Dharma. That animosity is not ended through animosity, and animosity is ended through lack of animosity. They were able to hear the Dharma, and that was the end of that long cycle. So sometimes lack of honesty means it looks like you lost. But instead, what you might think is that someone has taken their bad karma and they're handing it to you. And they said, do you want to take this and throw it back at me? Well, it's, you're going to get mud all over your hands. Think of it that way and say, no, nope, I don't want that. Or if someone comes at you angry, and it's like they're wearing a shirt that's all covered with shit. And they say, hey, do you want to put my shirt on? If you respond with anger, that's what you do. You're putting on that shirt. So try to hold these perceptions in mind, because they can help remind you of what true victory is and how you can gain the victory that really matters.